Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. I believe we actually have two systems today from the user um, Trollluigi in Discord so a massive thank you to them for sending in their systems here but without further ado we're just going to hop straight into these. So right the first system they have sent for us today is the Seren system. I hope I'm saying these right apologies in advance if I do butcher any of these pronunciations. Right so here it is so the Seren system, Seren system have you um, want to say it? Right, let's see what he has prepared for us. So he said that this one has no descriptions, so we're free to explore it and see what he has prepared for us here. So as we can see, it's um, a fairly small system. If we look at the star itself, it looks to be a more red giant phase sun. I mean, I could immediately put a comparison with this to my very own red giant sun, for instance. If we go all the way down here, yeah, it's roughly, a, this is definitely a red giant star, as we can see. Um, if we look onto the planets, as we can see, this solar system is definitely at the end of its life. As we can see, the uh, most inner planet here, this one is pretty much the equivalent of maybe Mercury or Venus at this point. I mean, that's, uh, well, maybe even Earth, but yeah, it's not even looking, not looking good whatsoever. So that is the first planet. Next object out, we got another um, Earth-like rocky world. Well, I say Earth-like, I mean, it's not really Earth-like anymore, but um, it's similar in uh, mass and radius. I mean, it's more of a super Earth, actually, um, looking at its uh, stats there. But yeah, there we go. So second planet, as we can see, also just completely being erased by the star there. Okay, right now taking another jump out, so we have uh, Ranvar over here, so this one is probably more of the Mars maybe equivalent, Ooh, oh, oh, that's not looking good is it, it also has a moon as well, okay, so yeah, it's the uh, last of the uh, inner planets, looks more like a, uh, I mean you can't really tell actually, but if you look on the uh, thing here, it looks more of like a rocky world, so maybe, maybe it was more like a Mars world, who knows, we can't really tell though, because they're all, uh, been very very uh, burnt up and it always has a yeah, little moon as well which is losing material you can see there's a lot of material particles um, around if you look carefully so you can see there's a little uh, look very carefully you can see that red sort of glow that's a loss of material I mean we maybe we should click play and see what happens so there's that one okay so now we're taking a bit of a jump by the looks of it I think there was a hidden object as well yeah, if we look here this one had a blacked out trail so we have an object in this asteroid belt so this is the next planet out it's actually a gas object as well, okay, so it's 38 masses of Earth, 4 radius, okay, so it looks like Planet 9, Neptune, Planet 9 sort of stats, and if we go to Jupiter, I mean, yeah, it's nothing uh, too crazy there in kilometres, oh, so it's only, oh, okay, never mind, no, it's a, um, it's a large number there, so if we look, it's 1, or oh, 31, yes, yeah, so it's 31,000 in uh, radius there, so, yeah, it's roughly, yeah, a little larger than, like, the Neptune, Uranus, size giants, so, yeah, there's that hidden world. Uh, next up, we have got um, Itinor. I hope I'm saying that right. So this is obviously the Jupiter equivalent, one mass of Jupiter. It's also got some moons, uh, moon action as well. We can see this one has been absolutely terrorised by the uh, star, by the looks of things. So there's that one. Uh, next moon out. Okay, it's a little cooler here, but still in the 400s. So it's still fairly hot, hotter than Mercury is today. So there is that moon. Uh, then we have uh, this one over here. Okay, so yeah, we can definitely see that this system is definitely past its time for any possible life world. So, so yeah, there's those guys. Okay, so next jump out, we've got this one, the second last of the planets. So another Jupiter equivalent in here. It also has rings, two sets of rings. Looking very nice indeed, okay. And then we've also got some moons. So we've got some smaller minor objects there. So we'll just keep the menu up to view those. And we have this one. Ooh, a planet with an atmosphere. The only planet, with, or I say moon, the only object with an atmosphere so far and probably the only one overall so if we have a look here have a little look underneath that is a ocean i want to say that that's that looks to be an ocean turn the water yes it's an ocean okay so it has an it's an all ocean world okay so maybe like jupiter's moon europa maybe this has started off similar to that so we can see it's got some stats as well and yeah warmed up at this far distance by our red giant star so cool cool put the zone on for instance you have a better look at where it like, stands so we are in that reddish zone so we are still in range of that star's uh, luminosity and if we look at the distance so 49 yeah you so we're roughly uranus saturn uranus distance at the moment from the star so okay another moon here this one is uh, also being scorched up then we have this moon up here so we already viewed that one and then i think we had oh okay so there's a gas moon right a gas moon that has its own moon as well and that was just a uh, minor little object too okay and then lastly the moon around the main planet is over here right so i believe that's all of those guys so yep that's that whole system done 
Okay, so next up, jump into the last planet in the system here. So it appears to be another super Earth, fairly larger than the Earth in its stats. And it's an all frozen world by the looks of things. Yeah, it look, looks pretty uh, looks pretty frozen up to me, yeah. So minus 128, so one of the only relatively cool objects in this system. And then um has a moon as well. Okay, so yeah, there we are. So that is a system obviously in the red giant phase and Let's just get a line up of all our objects in here. So as we can see, I mean, most of them are too hot to really uh, show much detail. I mean, all of the inner objects here, I mean, they're just glowing hot. So there's not really too much going on. Obviously, this was the only, um, probably the most unique object in here. So it was the only one with its uh, oceans still intact. Maybe the other ones never had oceans. Maybe they did. Who knows? But yeah, there you go. So that is that system. So that's the Seren system. So that was the first of uh, Troll EG systems for us um, today. So now moving on to the second system. So this one is called the... Um, Alar Yuga system, hope I'm saying that right. So let's go ahead and uh, see what he has prepared for us in the second system. So it's this one here. Okay. Come on, game. Oh, oh, we got reading. We got a lot of reading. Right. I do like our reading. That is a very lot of reading. Right. Okay, so where are we? So, uh, orbit on the labels. Okay. There was a battery center in here. Okay, interesting. Right, so where are we going into the middle? We always like to start in the center star. So there's the barrier center, that's the center of gravity. So there's the star itself, okay. So uh, the Alarguir system, I hope I'm saying that right, is a small system located on the edge of the Milky Way over 20,000 light years from Earth. It is compromised of two stars which orbit each other very closely. One a white dwarf, the other a red dwarf. Interesting stuff, okay. Right, white and red in a binary, awesome stuff. Two sh um, yeah, so when the white dwarf was a red giant, the two stars actually shared a common envelope because the red dwarf was inside it. From afar, the combination of the two stars makes them look purple. Does it now? Ah, okay, yeah, so the red and white, obviously that make more of a pinky, pinky shade, pinky red or purpley shade. Um, okay, so the star itself, so Alar Russo, I really hope I'm saying that right, but I'm probably completely butchering it, so apologies. Uh, the most massive star in the binary is the white dwarf, a dead star with a spectral type of DA5. It is about average for a white dwarf containing hydrogen in its atmosphere. Okay, so now moving on to this one. So, uh, ne Nejaya, if I'm saying that right. The, the less massive star in the system uh, is very dim and the red dwarf with a spectral type of M7VE. All right, cool. So binary system, there's our two stars. Awesome stuff indeed. Right, first of the planets, right. Okay, so uh, I like the background as well. Look at the background. The Milky Way does look more faded than dimmed out, which is pretty cool. Right, ooh, I'm liking the way this looks. Right, okay, so this planet here. There's definitely oceans on there as well. I really like the way that looks. Right, um, the closest planet to the binary, its orbit is just stable enough for it to retain a stable climate. It is quite hot, but does harbour a lot of water on its surface, and somehow life appeared. Detailed studies of the planet show that it seemed to have appeared just 300 million years ago and has evolved very quickly. It is quite dense and has 129% Earth's gravity. Okay, let's get a little closer look underneath. So, there you go. Ah, okay. See some purpley areas. Also got a nice ocean going on there. I rate it. I think that's a really good looking object. I like the atmosphere colour. I like the clouds. Really, really nice indeed. I like it. That's a good looking object. Awesome, right. So that's the first one. Big thumbs up there. Right, next up we've got uh, Tanara. I'm saying that right. All right. So what we got? It's a small, dense, rocky world, similar, a colder, larger Mercury. I thought straight away this does look like a Mercury. It is rich in very useful materials, something that will serve any intelligent species well in the far future. Right. And it also has a moon as well. A small little moon to go with it as well. Cool. Right. So where are we heading next? Okay, next up we got um, Aaron. Largest planet in the inner system, right? Oh, it's a gassy. Right. Um, it is a bluish gas dwarf, 66% larger than Earth and 2.05 times its mass. It has four moons, one of which is Cori, which is spherical. Winds on Aaron can be very fast, up to a, a thousand meters per second at the equator. That's some pretty speedy stuff going on there. Right, so he said about this moon here, Cori. Okay, cool. And I'm guessing all the other ones are just minor asteroids then, aren't they? Yeah. So those are all, yeah, all asteroids. Right, cool. Right, so there's all those guys. Right, next up we got a Solomon over here. It's a Titan-like planet with leaks of methane, methane I should say, and a thick hazy atmosphere. It is not very dense at all, just 3.06 uh, 
g centimeters cubed and a gravity just 47 percent that of earth it has rings and three moons the closest of which turrican is spherical and covered in follins making it red uh, that's the stuff that makes pluto uh, have its browny reddish color so there you go cool really do like all the reading and it's also got some two uh yeah also some more uh more normal moons going around it as well but yeah onto the planet itself so it has the rings obviously oh but where we got oh let's go back to here clicked on the wrong set of rings so there there it is see a nice titan like world if we look underneath it have a look at those methane oceans there you go good stuff indeed right right so now scrolling down all right so next up we go Odin over here um Arguma. It's a tiny, cold, rocky planet orbiting far from its parent stars. It has a blue atmosphere, or whitish blue atmosphere. Um, so far, in fact, its average temperature is around minus 213 degrees Celsius. The atmosphere is quite thin at 24% of Earth's atmosphere and composed of cold gases such as argon, oxygen, and nitrogen. There are signs that a liquid ocean, nitrogen ocean, may lie under this little planet, making it a very interesting world to visit. Arguma has just one minor moon, and between it and the final planet lies the asteroid belt. So we did see uh, a glimpse of that. Cool, cool. Right, and then here is its moon. So, uh, Arguma 1. Oh, I'm not really there we are. Cool. Right, so now taking a big jump, we can see Asteroid Belt. That's covering a lot of distance there. And then lastly, we have Archon over here. Oh, there's a lot of action going on here. Right, okay. So, it's very, very dark, as we can see. Okay. It's Planet 9 looking as well. I'm not surprised. I mean, it is very far away, so it looks like it's... Uh, one of those sort of ice giant objects. The last planet in the system, Archon, has been relatively undisturbed since it formed nearly 2 billion years ago. It is a deep blue methane rich gas giant with a mass nearly 3.5 times that of Jupiter. Orbiting at a very wide path around the system, it has a large influence on the inner system, preventing any planets from forming beyond Arguma, hence the asteroid belt. It has a lot more moons, 14 to be exact, and more moons should be discovered soon. One of its moons has a large water ocean on the surface, but life hasn't been confirmed there yet awesome and then yeah that is all of the reading for this system right cool so onto the planet itself obviously it looks like it's based off my planet nine you can see the colors are very similar indeed so looking good do like that object right we'll go on um just make things more interesting we will go on a bit of directional light i think yeah uh yeah there you go all right cool right so just uh lighten things up so onto the moons we'll do the normal we'll just uh go through the one see um spot any of these significant moons so we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, arc on five. Right now we're taking the jump. So we have this moon here. So this is uh, a larger moon as we can see. Got nice view of the gas giant behind it as well. And then we have this moon over here. So a more, uh, quite a, almost like a Mars looking world there. Right, then we have uh, this one over here. So this is Algon. Okay, got a bit of an atmosphere going on there as well. Right, so now we're taking a bigger jump out here so we can see the next moon. See, they all seem fairly uh, basic in design, so there they are. Then we have uh, Archon, so that's uh, 12, XII. Uh, then we have X, so that's number 10. Uh, XIII, so that's 13. And then lastly, we have this one over here, which is 14. Okay, cool. So yeah, that is the entire system worth of stuff now. And obviously, like you said at the start, there is a purple sort of haze. We just turn all the asteroids off. You can see it. Yeah, the stars, they do have a sort of purple appearance. I mean, let's, uh, we'll just try landing on one of these. So we'll just go here on the surface of this asteroid. So where are our two stars? So if you look over there, yeah. I mean, you could probably argue there's a bit of a purpley sort of haze going around there. Obviously, the stars are very close together. So there they go. Oh, well, let's see if we click play. It's got a nice sort of view. Let's uh, just zoom out of there. Let's see if the start you can notice the stars moving or not from this distance. So, well, you can see this if you look very, very carefully. You can see the orange star going around the white star, or the red, the red dwarf. I should say. You can see the star actually moving. That's pretty cool. That is pretty awesome. Right. So if we just uh, obviously zoom in again, get closer and closer, you'll we'll get a closer glimpse of those stars in action. So there you go. Look at that. Hey, so there I'll see them um, going around the Barry Center in the middle. So awesome stuff in detail. The Barry Center, can we select the Barry Center? There you go. So now we're in the Barry Center. This is a center of gravity between the two objects. We'll slow things down, and there you go. Honestly, really, really cool design. I like it. 
cool system. So there you go, there's the full lineup. So obviously, oh, this thing's huge. Oh, it's bigger than everything, right. Okay, so there's obviously the other gas giant we saw, and then obviously onto the planets. I think the first one we saw, I think that's my favorite in the whole system. I really like the design on that. So yeah, there's the uh, rest of the lineup though. So yeah, guys, let us know what you think of both of these systems. There's that, um, one of those uh, watery worlds. I think that was the one around the, was that around the last? Yeah, it was around the last gas giant. Yeah, that's the one he was talking about in the description. So the one that may have life, it may not have life. Cool stuff indeed there. Right, cool. So yeah, there's the full lineup once more. So yeah, guys, let us know what you think of that down below in the comments. And also a massive thank you to Troigi for uh, sending this in for us to check out today. And yeah, guys, if you'd like to send in your own simulations for this series as well, make sure to join my Discord server, link in the description. And then you can uh, upload your systems in there nice and easy. And then yeah, I'll get to them um, once I've gone through everyone who was sent before you. So yeah, you've got a bit of a queue going, but yeah, it's the only way to fairly do it. So yeah, hopefully you uh, guys understand that. But yeah, with that all said and done, guys, let's even go for 40 likes on today's video. Subscribe for more help us on the journey to 22,000 subscribers. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.